Need a website? We can help. TWW Studios creates websites that targets your audience that will attract customers to your business or organization. Our focus is to understand your brand, services, and needs. TWW Studios offers graphic design, web design, hosting, site maintenance, and motion design services. Need a television commercial, professional photography, training videos, video editing services, or animation? We can help. Call us today at 505-205-7142. Hey guys, we're here at the Fiesta of Wheels and I'm with John Cantella from Arizona. He's got a beautiful 55 Willis here and he's going to tell us about it. Hi. This is a Jeep CJ3B. It's the first overhead valve engine that, in a Jeep. That's the reason for the tall hood. Some people call that the ugly one. Yeah. Depends on your likes. Uh, it's been completely restored as original. The top is a Sears Allstate top was 154.95 brand new. Needless to say, I didn't pay that for it. I paid 300 bucks for the top. Yeah, but that was back in 1971, correct? Yeah, oh. yeah, inflation. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> it. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Draws a lot of attention. Rides like crap, <laughs> but that's part of the deal. I'm sure it's got a really low gear in ratio on this thing. For the people that know about this stuff, five point. Two, nine. So in other words, you can put it in gear, you can hop out, and you can pretty much walk faster than the car is oh, yeah. going at that point, For right? those that smoke, you can get out, have a cigarette, talk to your friend, get back in, and maybe only have to walk 10 feet to catch up. Yeah. Now how so often do you take this out and uh, play with it? Uh, at least once a week. Yeah? Yeah, we live on the edge of town, so dirt roads leading out of our community make it a lot of fun. Don't do any real bad four-wheeling with it, though. Yeah. A little narrow for that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a great-looking vehicle, and we appreciate you sharing it with us and coming out here to the Fiesta of Wheels. Thank you. We wish you luck. Have a good time while you're here, John. Nice talking to you, John. Thanks. Hey, this is Albert, and Albert's got a beautiful El Camino here. I believe it's a 1960, is that correct? That is correct. Can you tell us a little bit about your car, Albert? Uh, well, this car particularly, they made only uh, 14,000 of these cars, so uh, it's a 1960. Uh, how many of those are left, I have no idea, but there can't be too many. It's a real special car. Right. Just a beautiful, beautiful El Camino here. And uh, as we take a look at it, what uh, what engine do you have in this? Well, I have a, an original 283 engine. Uh, I got power brakes. Uh, it's got power steering, Camelback heads, uh, electronic ignition, um, and a turbo uh, power glide uh, transmission. Great. So, and you've done some awesome work on the interior here as well. Let's take a look inside and look yeah, at that, come guys. Over. Come on over. My uh, vecino, which is my neighbor, uh, Henry J of Henry J's Upholstery, uh, did it out of his garage next to me uh -huh. uh, and he actually did a custom interior. We went with the caramel colored carpet, a white headliner uh, and custom uh, yellow and white uh, two inch pleats. Nice. And if you notice there's a Chevy symbol on the door that we embroidered in there so yeah. it came out real nice. Boy he did a beautiful job and again that's local here at Albuquerque right? Yes it is. Great. Hey I want you to tell me something about your fender skirts here. These are called cruiser skirts. Uh, you got the Buick Stars and you got the portholes and you've got the gravel guards here. Uh, it's pretty expensive to build uh, a cruising skirts and all the additional uh, accessories that you have to put on them. Uh, it takes a lot of hunting, uh, a lot of swap meets, a lot of internet work. Yeah. Now, were those original to the car when it was new? It was an aftermarket accessory. Okay. Yes. Great. Yeah. So I can imagine that those are definitely a rare piece. Hard to find. It's really rare. Yeah. Now tell us a little bit about your car club as well, Albert. Well, we're the Dukes Car Club out of uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, we are known uh, worldwide as the oldest car club uh, in existence as of today. Uh, if you do your research on us, you'll find us in plenty of magazines, hot rod magazines, uh, throughout California, Japan, as far as Texas and Australia, we have chapters. Now you guys have specific cars that you like to uh, deal with within your car club. Uh, what, what span of the years do you deal with? 
in a in a general range we go from anywhere 1934 all the way up to about 1968 we stop at I see and uh, it can be anywhere from a Chevrolet to a beautiful Buick to a Packard nice you, know, so. you guys have a broad group of cars that you deal with yes, and, we do. and boy they've got some great examples here at the Fiesta of Wheels car show Hey, we thank you for showing us your El Camino, Albert. Just a beautiful car, beautiful car. Thank you very much Thanks. for stopping by. You bet. Appreciate your time. I'm here with Jimmy Gonzalez, and he has this awesome rat rod. Jimmy, tell us a little bit about this car, and, and kind of tell us about the history of what a rat rod actually is. Well, this is a 32 Nash. This was built by myself and some friends, some very good friends. Uh, the rat rod, I think, was originated when uh, back years ago when there wasn't uh, much money going around where you couldn't build up a nice hot rod. So rat rods were like bits and pieces of different types of cars, Chevys, Fords, Chryslers, Plymouths, and they were just put together and just kinda, friends just hanging whatever out. Whatever they yeah. had, yeah. yeah. And just getting in a garage, hanging out, and just right. putting a, a rat rod together, you know, just yeah. bits and work, pieces, working yeah. Man's version, right? A working man, exactly. Yeah. It's not all polished and chromed out. It's just a rustic, just finding parts there in the junkyard. Right, right. Yeah. And this, but the rat rodders were actually uh, a group of guys that were really influential with creating uh, the hot rod, you know, the, the, the buzz around hot rods and building hot rods, and those guys really were part of that process back then, weren't they? Exactly, exactly, yeah, that's, that's how these were, these were built, yeah, just, they were into the hot rods, they're hot rodders, rat rodders, and you've got, you know, rat rods slash hot rods, right. and that's what these were made of and as you can see this one was put with just different parts Chevy motor this is like I said a 32 Nash now did that uh, did you do the suicide doors or did they come originally with suicide doors? this one came with suicide yeah this is actually like I said a 32 Nash a sedan this is the back part of it and then we made it in and converted it into the front part that's cool and adding just welding the cowl to the to the back part See, that's awesome. Uh, you guys, when you're out there and you're driving around and you see these hot rods like this, you know, just remember this process. This has a lot of history behind the way that these things were put together like this. And there was, there was a specific purpose about it. And uh, like he said, you know, this was a working man's hot rod. These were guys that were passionate about building cars and they may not have had a big pocket full of dough, but man, they had know-how. And they went out there and they got a group of their friends together and they would just put all kinds of things on these cars and parts and different things and, and their own flair to it, even even some artistic stuff. And basically ends up pretty much being kind of a work of art. Oh, right, right. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. I mean, we just, different friends, so many friends just add their own little touch to it. There's probably about four or five different guys just added to it, you know. Some right. had the idea with the bob wire, the machetes in the back, the skulls. Yeah. Just different stuff. Everybody just hanging out in the garage and on a Friday, Saturday night and putting right. stuff together. You know, one of the things I found interesting as I've done some research on these things is that most of those guys, you know, regardless of the, of the condition and, and what different stuff they put on, the one thing they kind of did at the end was they would finish it out with a touch of pinstriping. Right, right, just, yeah. Just a classic touch like that. Exactly. I think that's awesome. That's awesome. Exactly, yeah. This one was pinstriped in... Uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, yeah. by a, you know, I can't think of his name right now, but somebody out of California, and that was the final touch, yeah. the pinstripe. Now, did you pick this car up here in New Mexico, or did you bring it in from someplace no, else? No, this was or? picked up here. This one was built here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, All right. from a okay. friend. He started it, and like I said, we, uh, we just added on and added on. This is here. That's great. That's yeah. great. I, I really appreciate you sharing this car with us and uh, just just an exciting example of a rat rod and uh, thanks very much. Thank you. This beautiful 35 Ford Humpback belonged to John Avila. John, tell us a little bit about your Ford here. This is just an amazing car. Well, it is uh, really, really an, an exceptionally well done car. Uh, every part that's in this car uh, was brand new. There are no used parts in the car from the uh, 350 Ramjet 
uh, air engine the tenant to the transmission um, to the uh, to the suspension system all of the parts that are in the car were brand new right. it was built out in California uh, and uh, painted out there also so uh, it is uh, has a dash, a custom-made burl wood dash, mm -hmm. made by Rabbit Art Works, well, by Rabbit Wood Works, right. out of, also out of California. So it's just an exceptional car, and, and I just love driving it. And that's the thing, is you told me that you really do use this kind of as a daily driver, don't you? I do, I do. I use it, uh, I, I drive, I have four of them, and I drive all of them all of the time. So I, I, uh, we were in Flagstaff three weeks ago, and uh, to the car show, they have a big car show there with about 450 cars, and uh, and we won uh, best of show for pre-1936 street rods. So. I, I can see why it's yeah. it's a beautiful car. Thank you. We drove it to Pueblo in June, the end of June, to the National Street Rod Association show, and right. had a great time there. It's a great venue for. Uh, for street rod shows, I think probably one of the best in the country because it's got a, a an oval track that runs the inside of the in the inside of the fairgrounds, and you can just sit in one place and people drive around all day long, and you could probably see all 2,059 cars that are there from one place. So That's it's great. like uh, it's like a, a step back and down memory lane. Excellent. Well, we appreciate you being from New Mexico and representing us well when you go out there to these various car shows. And thank you so much for showing us your beautiful vehicle. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mexico Ride fans, check out our new website at www.nomexicorides.tv where you can get insights on exciting upcoming events happening here in New Mexico. Learn more about the New Mexico Ride show, crew, and more. And see videos of past episodes and behind the scenes. Check out our New Mexico Rides new eShop, which offers merchandise like t-shirts, hats, mugs, and more. It's all on the New Mexico Rides website at www.nemexicorides.tv.